This week on CrossFeed, Pontius Palin is the rosary a gang symbol? Mickey Mouse must die. Saint Charles Darwin, Pentecostalism, the final frontier where no man has gone before. <laughs> Apparently. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's CrossFeed News. I am Dr. Jim Butler, I serve as pastor of St. Luke's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts. And I am Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. Welcome everyone to CrossFeed Religious News. How you doing, Jim? Good to see everybody and good to be back. And uh, Hey, we're doing good. Uh, as of tomorrow, I will have a third child officially through basic training in the Army. And so I'm not with her, uh, not at her graduation, though, this year, this time, uh, like I was the other two. I figured other people can spell me this time. And But uh, on Friday, she leaves for San Antonio, where she will go to the medical school for the armed services at Fort Sam Houston. Cool. Well, I'm getting Let's over a nasty a cold. And um, I'm, I'm doing a lot better today than I was yesterday. Man, uh, Yes, it was awful, but I'm still doing better than my guinea pig, who's uh, really sick um, with pneumonia, and uh, so I'm I'm f- figuring out how much you can possibly spend on vet bills for a fifteen dollar guinea pig. <laughs> but you know he's a member of the family, so what are you gonna do? So let it die. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't like any pigs, and uh, that's all there is to it. <laughs> Do you not like them because they're not pure? I don't like them because they're squeaky little varmints, <laughs> overgrown rodents. <laughs> well, speaking of rodents, that brings us to our yeah, first story. Okay. This is awesome. I I thought this was just hilarious. This is funny that you and I both picked this story. There's two of them tonight you and I both picked. Yep, yep. So, um, I'm just going to, I've got the video here. and So, I have to apologize for those uh, who are just listening to the audio because it's in Arabic. And uh, so, if you you normally get the audio, uh, you want to, well, you can follow the links in the stories and, and find the the YouTube clip, but uh, let's see here. You're probably going to lose my audio after this, folks, because it happens every time he shows a video, so just yeah. a warning. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Be quiet and watch the film. Sorry. Then Memory TV. <laughs> What is the position of Islamic law with regard to mice? The Sharia refers to the mouse as little corrupter and says it's permissible to kill it in all cases. It says the mice set fire to the house and are steered by Satan. The mouse is one of Satan's soldiers and is steered by him. If a mouse falls into a pot of food, if the food is solid, you should chuck out the mouse and the food touching it. If it's liquid, you should throw it all out because the mouse is, mouse is impure. According to Islamic law, the mouse is a repulsive, corrupting creature. How do you think children view mice today after Tom and Jerry? Even creatures that are repulsive by nature, by logic, according to Islamic law? have become wonderful and are loved by children, even mice. Mickey Mouse has become an awesome character. Even though, according to Islamic law, Mickey Mouse should be killed in all cases. <laughs> Am I see? See you real soon? K-E-Y? Because you're impure and we're going to kill you, you stupid little rodent! <laughs> Ammo USE. (laughs) 
You know, don't they have better things to worry about? <laughs> See, now we really... Yes, you, not. I'll tell you one thing. If, uh, if our uh, national security ever gets lax, I'm not going to Disneyland, man. Now we know what their next target is. That wouldn't be a real good idea. Yeah, that's true. And they don't even like Tom and Jerry. How can you not like Tom and Jerry? <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking itchy and scratchy, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> my nickname for my kids. Yeah, yeah you would. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, it is kind of interesting. I thought this was kind of funny. And... and Every once in a while, I mean, people think of, you know, people being religiously kind of over the top a little bit. You know, I mean, this this is over the top. Uh, you know, I mean, you God only knows what they do with Mighty Mouse. Here I am to save the day. You know, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm picturing the next, you know, we've, we've seen those. Uh, oh, there was that video a while back with the, the, the puppet that goes in and kills President Bush. You know, remember that one? All right, so, you know, I'm just waiting for the new, you know, uh, cartoons coming out of uh, out of the Middle East with, um, you know, Mighty Mouse versus the Ayatollah or something like that. <laughs> big old Muslim uh, mouse trap. You know? <laughs> so yeah, that or a big old Muslim suicide bomber. <laughs> no, they're having trouble with that. All the good ones are gone. <laughs> <laughs> so you know I, I, I'm looking at this <laughs> and I'm going okay alright so you believe that you know that, that a mouse is impure I mean I, I'll agree with that you know um, squeaky dirty little thing <laughs> yeah I don't like having mice in my house either um, no he just has uh, <laughs> guinea pig guinea not pigs. much difference see no those are totally different guinea pigs are pure <laughs> Mouse, get you a roll call. Manette, Chuck, Roy, I did a nap. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible over here, aren't I? <laughs> I should, you know, I, I mentioned Itchy and Scratchy before. So, the, you know, the next thing I'm picturing is, uh, is, I forget which is which, but I can just picture the cat. Um, you know, wearing it's like a, you know, some sort of Muslim garb, <laughs> and then unleashing all kinds of violence against the mouse. I mean, yeah, this is this is one of those things that that really makes other Muslims look bad because people go, "Oh, those crazy Muslims," you know. Um, you know, but this is the that Middle Eastern, um, kind of radical Islam. Um, I, you know, I've never heard uh, Western Muslims speaking out against Mickey Mouse. And I'll bet you that if you go to uh, either of the Disney places in the United States, uh, that you'll find Muslims there. Most people can distinguish the I difference. I Disney. Yeah, see, um, looks like we have a little bit of a delay tonight, too. But um, most people can distinguish the difference between a cartoon mouse and a real mouse. I mean, uh, real mice in our house get either trapped or poisoned, um, but... Uh, or put in cages. <laughs> all in cages. <laughs> well, you know, we were trying to come up with names for them. Um, I did suggest test subject A, test subject B, and test subject C, but that didn't go over too well. So, um, but... It, no, they also, uh, the same guy last month condemned the Beijing Olympics as the Bikini Olympics, claiming that nothing made Satan happier than seeing female athletes dressed in skimpy outfits. Nothing made Dale happier anyway, <laughs> but we won't go into that. <laughs> yeah, you are bad tonight. <laughs> Oh, 
you know, what can I tell you? You know, I just, I just, just over here having a good old time tonight, and uh, different things. You notice the folks? He didn't deny it. <laughs> he said, "I'm bad." He laughed. He did it. Nothing. Boy, no control. <laughs> I officially deny it. There. <laughs> <laughs> It took him. He had to be prompted. No, notice this. I mean, I I don't think this is too sincere. They're, they're sorry. And they're sorry you got caught. Who knows what he is? Sorry about this. I know it's a bit silly. So it. it uh, I, I I find it interesting. Um, this guy is a former diplomat at the Saudi embassy in Washington D.C. So um. Wow. <laughs> I, I also there are no mice in that embassy. Yeah, but I love I love how he says that um that Mickey is an awesome mouse. So it'll it's, give me more awesome dead. It's like he's he's awesome. He's, he rocks, but he needs to be he needs to die. You know, you know I'm thinking there is there is like something lost in the translation there. <laughs> Yeah. You know, maybe guinea pigs are just more evolved mice or something. Yeah, uh, you know, like that idea. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm moving right along here. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> um, Here's our good old buddy Charles Darwin there, folks. Yeah, everybody wish him a happy birthday. Chuck, uh, yes. Yeah, Chuckles is 150 years old now. When 150 yeah. years old you reach, look as good, you will not. That's true. <laughs> and the Church of England last night, uh, um, uh, I guess um, earlier this week, unveiled the website uh, promoting Darwin's uh, evolutionary views. They were concerned about the noisy advocates of a little interpretation of the Bible, especially the people in the United States, because... You know, some of these people actually teach that God really created the world. Yeah. Yeah, and that the Bible's true. I know. I'm, and I'm glad we have the Anglicans to set us all straight on that. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and he said, the Reverend Dr. Malcolm Brown, one of the inspirations for the website, said we felt there would... Uh, would be public interest, particularly because of the right, rise of creationism in the United States. Yep, got to put that down because creationism is this new thing that's popped up. Um, this whole idea of God, you know, creating the world in six days and um, and resting on the seventh. This is a pretty new idea. You know, it's only been around for like um, thirty four hundred years, yeah. so. I like this Andrew Copson, uh, director of education for the British Human Association. He's like, oh, you shouldn't look at the kid and say, shut up. That's for religious education. If your child raises in a classroom, you don't say, shut up. You say, that's not a scientific perspective. So it can be an opportunity to demonstrate what a scientific perspective is. Yeah, right. See, now this scientific is when you say, all right, now, we find a layer of volcanic ash, and below that, several layers of sediment. Now, what would cause that? Well, a global flood that had accompanying uh, volcanic eruptions. But who would think that there was such a thing as that? Hmm, um, well, Moses thought that. He had a beard kind of like that, too, probably. <laughs> um, and uh, he thought it because God told him that. And, um, well, you know, that's what we find. And we find stuff buried in the layers of sediment. Um, and, uh, and, and we find this historical document from Moses that says that, uh, that this historical event occurred and that it, um, that the, the, the fountains of the deep, which uh, a lot of people interpret meaning uh, volcanoes, because there's no Hebrew word for volcano. Um, opened up, you know, so we, we find this, this layer of volcanic ash kind of on top of all these layers of sediment. And, um, now by science, we would look at that and say, well, you know, that's a theory. 
And uh, since there's historical evidence to back it up, now the job is to disprove that it happened. So far, there hasn't been any proof that it didn't happen. Therefore, it's still a viable theory. Now, if you were going to be dogmatic, if you were going to be religious, you would say, no, 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 you're not allowed to teach that. You're not allowed to look at the evidence that way and suggest this alternative idea. That would be dogma. Oh, wait. Actually, the real is, is that the mice, you know, <laughs> had the world created, you know, so that they could understand what uh, the, the life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> and the answer, of course, is Dale. 42. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now we know why the mice are in fear. They're really running everything. <laughs> I wonder what he would do with that book. <laughs> so long, and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> He'd probably burn it. I wonder if dolphins are impure. <laughs> <laughs> How many roads must a man walk down before they call him a man? For those of you who have no idea what in the world we're doing, these are all lines from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Douglas Adams. So remember the if you haven't read it, life, read it, read yeah, it. You should. Yes, don't panic. Read the whole trilogy. Um, it's uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. All five books. Yeah, there's five now, aren't there? Because there's that the uh, young Zephod something. I haven't read that last one. I've only read no, the no, first no, four. Actually, no, there's uh, there's uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the restaurant at the end of the universe. The life, the universe, and everything. So long, and thanks for all the all the fish. And yeah, there was a fifth one. Whatever. Yeah, it was Young Zaphod something. Yeah, and uh, then um, and he was actually working on a, 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 a another one, salmon something or other, flying fish and. But he never finished it. That was uh, when he died. But yeah. but there was a guy. You want to see a guy who believed in evolution with Doug Adams. And yeah. uh, in his final book that uh, he actually did not finish, but they have a whole collection of essays. And one of what you did, and it's interesting because one of them, he compares the evolution to computer. He talks about the age of sand and how, you know, the computer is evolving. And the funny part is that, yeah, yeah, and this was, he actually gave this before a scientific panel at this paper. And I'm sitting there reading it going, but the computer was designed. <laughs> the microchip was designed. Well, the improvements are being designed well, by people. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been the guy. You just made a real good argument for that. There was a designer behind everything. Yeah, yeah, intelligent design, not necessarily you know creation or you know young Earth creation or something like that, but definitely intelligent design. Um, there was uh, uh, there's a new video game that just came out uh, from Electronic Arts called Spore. You heard of it? It's by the same guy that um, invented The Sims. No, and. Uh, it, uh, it basically it's an evolution simulator, but the player is directing the process the whole time. So it's basically it's a theistic evolution simulator. It's an intelligent design simulator, <laughs> and and so people are you know people are going, oh well you know this is a they go well nobody can really complain about this because you know um, except for like young Earth creationists, uh, everybody else. You know, it's an intelligent design sim. <laughs> so it's not, you know, it's not a random process at all. So, I mean, ultimately it's just a game. But, um, you know, interesting thing about, you're talking about the church. And, um, oh, you hear my guinea pigs squeaking in the background? <laughs> <laughs> They're getting in on the discussion. Die! 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 <laughs> Die! <laughs> um, Charles, you know where Charles Darwin is buried? Westminster Abbey. Yep. Right up in front. I did not know that. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like the Anglicans supporting Darwin is anything new. Uh, on the other hand, Darwin was an agnostic his whole life. Um, I read a list of quotes from him uh, when I was following this article. And, um, you know, he repeatedly said he didn't think that his theories were... Uh, 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 out, out, uh, overruled 
religion or, or anything like that. He considered them compatible, but at the same time, he considered himself an agnostic. He said, I haven't found enough evidence um, where I could say that there is no God, but um, at the same time, I don't, I can't uh, verify that he does exist either, so I consider myself agnostic. So, it, it seems strange to treat him as a saint. Um, or to, you know, to, to, to hold him up as this great, wonderful person, you know, I mean, cause you've got like, people like to compare with Galileo, all right. And, and go, well, look at the, you know, Galileo, he, um, he was persecuted by the church for his ideas. Okay. Yeah, that's true. But Galileo was a Christian. And, um, so, you know, he was kind of annoyed. And the other thing is, the Bible does say things about the origins of life, and um, but it does not say anything about the position of the uh, the sun and earth relative to each other and the movement of the heavenly bodies. So there's a little difference there. I thought it was interesting. The Tahir Alam of the Muslim Council of Britain said that there's a rising trend of intolerance towards religious beliefs. Secular atheism is getting very dogmatic. Yeah, like I was demonstrating before. Uh, yeah, and it's interesting too that the, the rabbi, Rabbi Tony Bayfield, who's uh, a Reformed Jew, you know, is not so hip on the creationism idea. On the other hand, he also says it's not right to teach Darwin, Dawkins secular fundamental, uh, teach the Dawkins secular fundamentalist view. Uh, and that's interesting. That, uh, that I thought that was an interesting term, secular fundamentalism. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it absolutely you is. Know, We've talked about that on previous episodes. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was interesting that 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 you know uh, uh, we agree with a Muslim in this, and we agree with a Reformed Jew. Yeah. But we still yeah. like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> but yeah, and we're disagreeing with the Christians. Well, yes. <laughs> <coughs> hmm. Let's see, where should we go to next here? Um, well, speaking of fundamentalists, um, let's uh, take a look at the uh, Assembly of God. Okay. Go out there and look at the strange bull in the world. <laughs> I, just, I just took a, 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 a picture, I just grabbed a picture of people praying with their hand raised. It's the closest thing I could find to uh, somebody talking about Assembly of God and things like that. This is a, uh, an article by uh, Michael Gerson, who used to work in the Bush White House. And um, I thought it was a really interesting article myself. I don't know about you. Uh, it is called Faith-Based Condensation. And as he's talking about how many of these reporters are just kind of buzzing about you know, Sarah Palin, uh, vice, pro- uh, the vice presidential candidate, um, being a... Um, Assembly of God Pentecostal person uh, and stuff, and they called their church a shout and holler tabernacle. Um, and um, how is it that they put this? I thought it was just a really interesting. Uh, uh, oh gosh, where is his quote to describe how he, uh, uh, how they act? Um, Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. Like Beatles to the vivid yeah, blue it paradise is, yeah. of the, the bug zapper. Pente- yeah, well, the media treatment of Pentecostalism and Bible church evangelicalism has all the quality of a National Geographic special on a newly discovered Amazon tribe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pentecostal's I mean, been around really, for a while. I mean, well, it's been around since uh, uh, 1906 in the uh, Azusa Street Revival, which, interestingly enough, by the way, was very uh, uh, interracial group. And um, it is um, still, and it is one of the fastest growing uh, branches of Christianity. I mean, for all the influence the Episcopalians get, uh, they're they're smaller than the, the Assembly of God. The Assembly of God have, have have surpassed them. A majority of the mega churches you hear about are either Assembly of God or uh, often have been influenced by them. Uh, yep. Because a lot of evangelicalism has been, you know, strongly influenced by charismaticism and uh, the hands up in the air worship and things like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they teach uh, these these really bizarre things that the press has just never heard of before, like um, the Bible's the word of God, and um, God created the world in six days, and uh, Jesus is God in the flesh, and um, salvation by grace alone through faith. Uh, you know, it's just you know these these just strange teachings that no one's really ever heard of before. Oh, except for like, uh, all of Christendom. Side, on the flip side, there is also, though, uh, you know, they do have their their strange things. I mean, because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and so uh, you know, they have people being slain in the Spirit, and very ex- 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 experiential. Uh, one person, I think, asked either I think asked her pastor if she'd ever spoken in tongues. Um, which some of them claim to have done. I mean, and you, you know, you you can't. Uh, Say they haven't, and there are, by the way, there are different, you know, I mean, you do get the the, uh, uh, the Toronto Blessing folks who are, you know, walking on all all fours, baying like donkeys, and, you know, uh, but then there's, I, I mean, I, it was interesting, because I, I met an assembly of God preacher, and I had pastor, and I asked him what he thought of it, and he was like, I think that's Satan. <laughs> you know, he was just, he had no possible belief that, uh, you know, who was the Toronto blessing? Who was behind that? I can't, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, or the, the other guy down in Florida, the same thing, who just left his wife for his secretary. Um, uh, Leland, I think was his name. Um, but, uh, you know, so you get some of these more bizarre forms, um, and you do get the people who are out there saying, I had a prophecy from God, and here it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's also a little something that are a little bit more mainstream. We have some members of our congregation that used to be members of a, a Pentecostal church, and their pastor would always tell them, we keep out the granola bunch. That's the fruits, nuts, and flakes. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of variation uh, within within the organization. Right. Well, what, and one of the things they often do in this case is that they will look at some of these more bizarre things and then... And especially in a church body like the Assembly of God, where there so is a huge amount of, you know, diversity. So, you know, look at a bizarre one, and you must be this because you're the, you've got the same title. Uh, the other thing, though, the, the other side point there is, uh, you know, that it's almost like, you know, the fact that she is religious is is crazy, as he puts it. And of course, Palin is put short portrayed as a theocrat, a Muslim but a millennialist in lipstick. <laughs> she went to my dead. Uh, she has yeah, a right to her... Muslims, religion, Muslims say the, the pigs are immature, too. Eat, the moon is made of... Or impure, I mean. That's true. Uh, she has a right to her religious beliefs in precisely the same sense that one has a right to believe that the moon is made of moonser. But she must not be allowed to impose such beliefs on others. But if you're an atheist, then it's okay to impose your beliefs on others. Well, I mean, part of a, part of the reality is, um, no matter what you believe, somebody's faith, somebody's belief is always going to be imposed. That's the nature of a law. I may believe that it's perfectly okay to um, kill someone, but that doesn't. But 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 uh, uh, there are laws against it. So your belief that this is a bad thing outweighs my belief that it's not. I mean, and, and you know, you, you've just imposed a belief on me. Uh, we're not going to let our Muslim sheep go and uh, uh, um, destroy Mickey Mouse and blow up Disneyland. He may have a belief that that's a good thing to do, but no, our belief is that it is not. And so our belief, somebody's values, somebody's belief is always going to rule. Although, if he could get the Supreme Court to force uh, Disney to release the uh, the copyright on Mickey Mouse, we'd all like that so that we can get all those old cartoons into the public domain where they belong. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, don't get me started on the, digital, the, the, on the Digital Copyright Act. There's a whole lot of stuff for that one. But anyway, I mean, the fact is, though, it's it's there. there's always going to be a... Um, uh, I feel uh, there's always going to be a value, a, a viewpoint imposed on people who don't like it. That 
that's the nature of laws. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, and what it comes, the other thing is though, that people, when it comes to what laws they're going to work to, um, uh, to, Im- to create, <laughs> to create, um, <clears throat> they're going to be influenced by their beliefs, by their worldview. I mean, that's just reality. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you always hear that, oh, well, she's a Christian, and so therefore, you know, it's going to influence her beliefs, and, and uh, it's going to influence the way she does things and stuff like that. Well, duh. Yeah. You know, that doesn't mean that she's going to work outside the law or or try to set up a, you know, like make America the new Vatican or the the new Pentecostal Vatican or something, you know, it just means that, um, that it's, it's, you know, she, for instance, is pretty well known that, that she respects human life and is, is pro-life because of her beliefs. Okay. Well, you know, the same way that, yeah. I mean, the same way that an atheist is going to say no, um, you know, it's more about my rights than my responsibilities. And, um, although, you know, I know atheists that also, uh, say, uh, you know what, I can't figure out where that line is between rights and no rights. So since I can't figure out where the line is, I can't draw a line. So, um, yeah, I think it's interesting too, that, you know, uh, almost again, this disdain, uh, when you think that uh, he points out that there's about 250 to 500 million Pentecostals in places from Latin America to Africa to, to Alaska, it's often described as the faith of the dispossessed. Many adherents come from poorer backgrounds. Um, and that's interesting, I mean, because, you know, one of the beliefs, as I understand it, the Democrats, is that we want to help the people of the poorer backgrounds. So I think you want to support <laughs> yeah. the churches that yeah. draw from them. Uh, the other interesting thing, I, I, the other one I like is he says, this guy says, uh, in general, liberal political media leads demonstrate a variety of religious diversity that runs the spectrum from secularism to liberal Episcopalianism, all the very shades of violet to blue. Uh, yet, it was sociologist Peter Berger who observed Puerto Ricans, Jews, and Episcopalians each form about 2% of the American population. Its which group does not think of itself as a minority. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you have any idea how few Jews there are in the world? It's just, you know, I was looking at a chart one time, and I mean, out of all of, you know, as a religious chart, not a, a ethnic chart, and out of, yeah, I mean, out of all the different religions and stuff, Judaism is this tiny little religion, and um, they're just really vocal. I mean, their rights deserve to be protected as much as anybody else. But, um, I don't know. For some reason, they get a lot of um, pandering to them. And I, I'm not sure why. You know, you'd think Well, there are certain, there are certain groups. Um, uh, 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 Jews are one group. Episcopalians are another. Um, there's, you know, a couple others out there. That for whatever reason their influence uh, out is outsized um, by the, you know, the yeah, their influence is much greater than their actual numbers, and and why that is uh, is an interesting question. But uh, you know there are several different church bodies in America that that, that you can point to. On, on the other hand, there are other church bodies uh, that uh, don't have near the influence that they should have for their size. Well, you think that there are about 7 million Lutherans, about, you know, three and a half times as many Lutherans in America as there are Episcopalians. We don't have near the influence the Episcopal Church has had. No. You know, and uh, it's just a, a strange, strange thing. And, and why that is is a good question. I mean, now obviously, if there's a lot of uh, in influence, for example, say, among Irish Catholics. But, you know, how many, how much strong influence are there among some other ethnic Catholic groups? I'm not always too sure. Yeah, the, probably some, though, but uh, maybe it's just how, living in Massachusetts. It's the Irish Catholics have all the power up here. 
Well, was it the uh, the Church of God? It's um, it's a Pentecostal group that is it's like the fourth largest de- um, denomination in the country, and or is it the second largest? I mean, it's huge. It's predominantly uh, black, but not entirely. Um, mostly in the South, but I mean. Any any group that big is is spread out all over the place. I mean, most people never heard of them, but they're they're huge, and probably just because they get oh, lumped in with um, just you know, it's just like oh well, that's just you know, Black Christianity or something like that, and they get kind of ignored. Maybe if they had a better catch name, you know, than Church of God, a little too generic sounding. Uh they they were all over Springfield. We had. Uh... Uh, all over Springfield, there there were black churches of God, and uh, one of them was just across the street from where my church was. But any out there, but anyway, so that's a uh, uh. But let's 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 move on. Let's talk. Let's let's stop talking about Governor Palin. Let's talk about another governor, Pontius Pilate. <laughs> or is it Pontius Palin? I have the video clip. Is it worth trying? <laughs> oh, uh, go ahead and try it. We can always stop it and restart it if we have to. Okay. I submit to you, uh, Mr. Speaker, that the parties have differences, but if you want change, you want the Democratic Party. Uh, Barack Obama was a community organizer like Jesus, who our uh, minister prayed about. Uh, Pontius Pilate was a governor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And that's it. There's this, this this little campaign, you know, dig, which was a reference to um, at her uh, vice presidential nomination acceptance speech. Uh, Sarah Palin said that uh, a community organizer or mayors are like community organizers, but they actually have respon- mayors actually have responsibilities. And it was just a little jab at Obama. And, uh, you know, everyone kind of chuckled and moved on. And, you know, all she was trying to say is that she um, has had all kinds of different uh, leadership positions. And that, you know, except for a sort of volunteer position, basically, um, he really hasn't had any leadership uh, experience. And so we have this uh, little dig here. <laughs> And he himself has, in his books, and pointed out that he was a community organizer. He's the one who brought that up as a qualification for the presidency. I mean, it wasn't like she just threw this out of broad air. I mean, it was something that he'd actually said and had been said the week before the Democratic National Commission. Uh, but, um, okay. Now, as a community organizer, he organized groups, he empowered groups, he got groups ready to, to vote, uh, you know, registered people to vote, registered, all of which are very good things. I knew, back when I was in Springfield in, in the urban area, I knew and worked with several community organizers. My question, when did Jesus register people to vote? When did Jesus organize neighborhood groups for protection? When did Jesus work as the community organizer? I'm trying to figure that out. Yeah, Jesus was more of a rabble rouser. Yeah, he he tended to do more to uh, sort of upset the balance and and get things all, um, you know, he brought more chaos than order uh, wherever he went uh, during his ministry. Usually, no, I'm chaos and he's mayhem. We're a double act. You know, I, I'm just trying to figure out, because uh, uh, there's two posts that we actually kind of combined here. There's there's that one, and, uh, yeah, uh, and, <coughs> excuse me, um, you know, uh, according to uh, labor leader Cecil Roberts, Jesus was a community organizer. Uh, Martin Luther King was a community organizer. 
Moses was a community organizer. Jesus was a community organizer. I, I'm not sure where I saw Moses getting people organized to vote and stuff either. He was more of a governor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he was. You know, he was. He was the next closest thing you got to a king. You know, he. He wasn't president because they wouldn't have voted for him. They, <laughs> they, all they did is well, all they did was complain about him. Eh, he could have been president. <laughs> now, my other, the other thing I like is and Stephen Cohen. By the way, yeah, I said that he's Jewish. So, um, but well, I liked what he. Uh, the next day, he said, "I didn't, and I wouldn't compare anyone to Jesus. Jesus cannot be compared to anyone." Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how you hear I mean, okay. I don't know how you hear that and, and not hear him being compared to Jesus. You know, here's the point, and there have been a couple times already that I've seen this um, in this campaign, and I'm sure it's going to happen again, where people kind of put their foot in their mouth. They're trying to get a, you know, a little jab in there or whatever, and it, it just, you know, kind of comes out wrong. You know, what you do then is you say, you know what, that came out wrong. I, I really, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Right? In the Christian church, we call that repentance. And uh, while this is not necessarily going to be the case in, uh, in, in politics, in the Christian church, repentance is followed by forgiveness. It's forgiven, forgotten. It is as if it never happened and it's not to be brought up again. Because the person repented. The other side of it is, you know, why, why can't people just grow some, some thick skin? You know, I mean, okay, so in her thing, she made a date at, at, at Senator Obama. It wasn't nasty. It wasn't rude. You know, in my opinion, it was a dick. Um, you know, and other people make digs back. That's part of the political process. I mean, if, <clears throat> I mean, you know, if you go back six months ago, you will find that Barack Obama's, you know, vice presidential nominee said Obama wasn't suitable for the job. I mean, he put his own digs at him. Mm -hmm. I mean, but somehow or other, that's gotten forgiven and forgotten, and now we can move on. Uh, yeah, I think there just needs to be sometimes you know, among the political stuff. Just, just grow a thick skin, you know. Don't take everything so darn personal. Because on November, the day after the election, um, one or the other is going to stand up, congr congratulate the other, and say, "Now let's all unite behind them." Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's. I, I haven't figured that out yet. I, you know, why can't we just kind of overlook some things? And that's, I mean, there's, there's other ones where they need to be called. I mean, there's some other things where both sides, you know, will we'll put out forth an ad distorting the other person's record. Yeah, that irritates me. You know, they'll say, "Oh, this person voted against that thing," but it was it was like some little earmark or something that um, on a much larger bill. Uh, it, Irritates me. Like, well, let's just be honest something. about what they stand up for. Or yeah. Take the words out of context. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, uh, and I've seen that on both sides. Then. And it's, that's that's. And maybe it's this 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 commercial culture that we've got. But you know, why is it we can't? Um, you know, really talk about, I mean, we're having a major economic crisis going on right now. You know, whatever is going to happen in the next, you know, by January, the, the economic future of America is going to be very different. You know, I mean, it's just going to look extremely different. But I haven't had heard either one of them sit down and, you know, talk about, okay, here are five things we really need to do to bring this together. Yep. And, uh, yeah, and the other side thing, too, uh, 
I mean, Dale and I uh, were both, um, you know, fairly conservative. I think we're probably both vote for McCain. Uh, but you know, regardless who wanted me to pray, that God would be the president and give him wisdom. No matter who wins, uh, we need to honor that person as uh, the leader of our country and realize that that person has got a huge job. And uh, I hope Obama, if he's elected, is ready for it because he's going to get old very quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that's an interesting thing. Uh, do this sometime. Find uh, pictures of presidents, uh, what they look like. Uh, before they're elected and what they look like after they're elected, even if it's a fairly short term. But every single one of them ages. I mean, you can just see significant aging on their um, on their faces uh, from beginning to end. Because I mean, it's a it's an intense job. I mean, man, I'd never run for it. It's because no matter what you do, you can't please everybody. You're criticized for every single thing you do and everything you don't do. and But yet, at the same time, these people are God's representatives on earth. All right? Not like and the Pope. Somebody but, in your administration who's going to do something stupid, there's going to be some sort of scandal that ups up over somebody you didn't even know about. It's something you didn't know about. It's, uh, and they're going to go after you. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're supposed to have... Um, control over a $2.4 trillion budget. Yeah. And not expect any, you know, and then and then any, anything unexpected happens and you got to be ready to have an answer for it in five minutes. No matter how catastrophic it is. So, yeah. It's, you know, and it's a huge job and, and yeah. <laughs> No matter who gets elected, we we do need to support them. Um, whether you agree with all their policies and decisions, I mean, it's kind of funny because the only thing that gets me is you know, you know, talking about Sarah Palin is you know she really if anything happened to John McCain, you know, which which is really funny. Yeah, she got it. Um, like, you know, first off, I mean, it's like. Republican Chuck Hagel today. So she's not ready to be president. I'm like, that's why she's running for vice president. Chucky, I don't know if you notice what she's running for, uh, but you know, she's not running for president. Yeah, everyone thinks that McCain's like on his deathbed. Cheney survived the vice presidency. No matter what, that no matter who you are, you're not ready for that job. Yeah. No matter what you've done yeah. up to that point. Uh, and one thing, you know. Um, that, that previous senators who've become congress I mean congressmen who've become you know left and then gone to work in the administration they're like you're on the other side all these relationships you built up in the, in the house and the senate and everything go out the window yeah but you know that's how the American government was set up though it's checks and balances you know they're really set up so that each branch of government is in an adversarial position because the whole point is to keep each other in check. And um, so, you know, and that's, that's something to understand. You know, I was talking about working together, working together. But that's, I mean, honestly, the, the founding fathers of the United States really, they were so afraid of tyranny that they really made a point of, of making sure that people would always be checking each other and, you know, and, and really kind of at each other. And and they figured that that was the way to do it, and uh, it's worked pretty well for a couple hundred years anyway, you know. Let's go to our last story then. I, you yeah. Know, I think we've done a story like this one before. Something similar, yeah. Haven't we done a, a religious symbol? It was done as a gang symbol one time before? Yeah. And uh, It's been a while, though. And in this, yeah, in this case, uh, there's a, a Texas teen named uh, Tabitha Ruiz. And she was stopped by security guards at a high school in Dallas, Texas, and told to take off her rosary, which she's wearing as a necklace, and said, it's a gang symbol. Yeah. Now, I think the most interesting thing about this story is the comment that we got on our site. Um, somebody, it was an anonymous post, um, 
and a comment to this story at CrossfeedNews.com that says, This lawsuit needs to be tossed. A rosary is not to be worn as a necklace, therefore the school was not violating her right to freedom of religion. It is a huge sign of disrespect to wear it around your neck. If she were praying the rosary, I would back the lawsuit 100%, but not this. I thought that was fascinating. Not being a Roman Catholic, I did not know that. I did not know it either. So that's why we value input from our you know, listeners and readers. Comment on the website. You can send comments to podcast at crossfeednews.com. We look for those things. Yeah. Um, but I thought it was interesting. Uh, you know, you know, just that uh, Ruiz and her mother, uh, Tara Ferguson, so they had no idea the rosary beads were a gang symbol. Um, Lee's, however, are well aware. Lately, they've been wearing religious jewelry, such as the rosary worn by gang members, so it is a, a factor. Senior Corporal Kevin Jans of the Dallas Police Department told us the box of photos. You know, here's my question to that. Does this mean that anything that a gang decides to use as their sort of gang colors, nobody else can, you know, nobody's allowed to wear it anymore? So, like, what if they say, well, we're going to wear blue jeans? Or, you know, <laughs> we're going to wear pants? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> like, you know, I'm just... Yeah, those bungle boy jeans? <laughs> I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> I've been watching tiny things called <laughs> Really, Dale's wearing anything. You know, that's keeping the camera hot. We're not going to go down that road again. Um, I don't know. I, See, he didn't deny it. <laughs> didn't deny it. When I was... <laughs> When I was in... <laughs> He's in the key mouth for his pants. He's a rodent. He's in here. <laughs> Maybe Mickey Mouse is in a gang. But I don't see a rosary on him. I've got him going here, folks. I'll tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I... I hope you're finding this as funny as he is. Um, but anyway, yeah, there is a certain question there. I mean, you know, because so many things can be game breathing. It doesn't take much. Um, I remember back in uh, um, Rockford, there were certain color combinations you weren't allowed to wear in school because they were game, considered game colors. And I was like, really? Yeah, I, it wasn't something I was real, you know, familiar with, but, you know, so, but, uh, you know, they, they had to be careful not to, you know, make something that would, you know, identify possible as being part of the game. See, when I was in high school, um, we had gangs um, in Madison. They were kind of pathetic, but um, they would just wear uh, bandanas that were different colors. And so you could tell which gang people were in based on their bandanas. But I, <laughs> what color was your bandana? <laughs> yeah, I didn't wear a bandana. <laughs> I'm, de <laughs> I'm denying that one. <laughs> I wore pants too. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But uh, anyway, to finish this off, um, yeah, I think it's a good question. I mean, at what point, uh, um, you know, at what point do you, uh, you know, work this group? On the other hand, I mean, this, this woman and her daughter say, we'll go to federal court to fight for this if we have to. I mean, I want to you to sit back and say, okay, for the sake of peace in the community, and this is actually now a gang symbol. Uh, I'll forego my right. You know, it's it, it um, you know, the, uh, it's a little bit maybe you know from from what Paul talked about in First Corinthians today. You know, if 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 it, if it you know, worries people, concerns people, if it brings up issues for people, don't do it. 
Yeah. I mean, she could put it in her pocket, which is probably the proper way to carry it. So it's not like she has to wear it, you know, or, or apparently not like she's even supposed to wear it. But, um, I, you know, I, I also, I see these things hanging from people's, um, car mirrors too. And I always kind of wonder, is that really a, that, that just seems more like a good luck symbol, you know, save you from speeding tickets or something. Ludicrous speed. <gasps> now that's my son's army beret. <laughs> that does save him from speeding tickets. Anyway, hey. but that brings us to the end for tonight. Uh, I bet you know anything about uh, you know the Rosary and Cain thing that you know. Uh, if it, you're a Mickey Mouse fans, uh, you know whatever, uh, let us know here. What's what uh, your opinion? At Crossfeed, uh, at podcast at crossfeednews.com, or you can go to our website, like the one guy did, and gave us that excellent brick uh, comment, which we had neither one of us knew. Um, another opportunity would be if you're watching this on iTunes, just click on the screen, take you right there to our webpage, you can write a comment. Or if you're on YouTube or something like that, you can use the comment there, and we'll get that as well. Yep. So we apologize for the quality tonight. I don't must be having network slowdowns. Um, Jim's been kind of speeding up and slowing down all night. That's not him. That's the network. Uh, things get kind of packaged up and then they expand and all, all of a sudden. And, um, some delays and stuff. And, and yeah, the auto quality did go down after that, uh, after that video clip too. But I think it'll be workable. So sorry about that. We're, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, I think it's probably just slow internet or something, but, um, we're working on it. Actually, <laughs> I'm doing this on my using my wife's computer because mine can't do video at all. All of a sudden, it's really strange. So, gotta call Apple Care. So, but thanks everybody for tuning in, and uh, and please, please let us know what you think, and uh, and uh, and leave a leave a review. On, on iTunes or something like that. Appreciate that too. So, thanks everybody. Good night and God bless. And remember, M I C D M X P. Why? A E Y. Why? Because we like you. M O U S E. Good night.